negotiation. Pay attention to what's happening uh, even in this country right now as we speak. Organized labor is asking for even a salary rise. And, and going by how difficult it's becoming for government to even uh, just see to that, to say, well, I'll, I'll double your sal salary, it's not even happening. Right. So if that's not even happening, it tells you, it gives you a sense of where government is now in terms of providing or making funds available for that to happen. So don't you feel that it may take a longer time and that you have to be patient, patient enough that, just to wait and see bless, what, what, what this will is happen? Where I bring the conversation to a matter of prioritization. If the education of yeah, the but country, if the funds are not there, I don't know what exactly you expect. Bless, bless. That's the point. That's the point. When issues of, um, of, of I cited example of critical needs, mm. such as fuel, yes. such as medicine. Such oh, as you food. feel education is, is on that same level? That's my point. No, I mean, the what? conversation has to drive from um, tokenism, where mm. education is more subjected to um, second thought, after thought, mm -hmm. lowered on the prioritization scale. Mm -hmm. That is where we are now. And that is why the students of this country are worried. We are worried because persons who understand mm. and know education very well ought to put education up there. I'm the sure there's someone the watching us right now who says, after all, what are we likely to lose if we have university students go on a little break? In fact, you're on a vacation. So if, if the academic calendar doesn't start on time, after all, what are we going to lose? You find the teachers coming back later on to recover all the lost period. So yes, it's as simple bless, as that. That's, that's, redraw, that's problem. I mean, redraw the calendar and you move on. So that's why I'm talking about the issue about patience. Yes, that is the problem. The problem is thinking that no problem. We we'll lose some hours. No problem. We we'll lose some days. No problem. That is the problem. The problem is that we do not see the missiles we are throwing at our education sector as damaging enough. We don't see the fact that we are gradually grounding our future as a country. Where do we get to if we are not taking our education as number one priority? Where do we get to? A question we need to ask ourselves is that, what do we want for our country? A country with a very porous or very um, um, uh, poor education sector, is that the future we want for ourselves? Every single hour we, we fail to ensure that our workers, our teachers get back to the classroom, is an hour deducted from our trajectory of development. Okay. Every what? single hour that we fail to get our, our college of education teachers back to the classroom is one hour taken away from our future. Okay, I, I get the, the story about the colleges of education because some of them are already in session. Uh, for the public universities that are about to reopen, what would you do if we miss the timeline uh, and we don't get the teachers back into the, the classrooms or on campus first of all, before the start of the academic first of calendar? All, I, I am a young man of faith. I right. have so much hope and assurances that mm. we won't get there. Mm. But this is the point. Do you know that as we speak, private investors are affected by this? And let me tell you why. So the, the, the impact is quite ravaging. Mm. You have private investors affiliated to um, the mentoring investors, which are public investors. Right. And whilst these investors are on hold, it means that services they ought to render to the private investors, such as mentoring, moderation, right. graduation, marking, do not happen. So even private investors mm -hmm. are all affected. Right. 